Welcome to HCS Voice Pack's tutorial, Interstellar Missions. We're going to be using the Voice Pack Eden for this, and by the end of this tutorial, you will know how to accomplish the following. Identify the interstellar jump range of your ship. Carry out an assignment from the mission board in Starport Services. Use the Transactions option to view and confirm your mission objectives. Use the jump drive for interstellar travel to another system and learn the technique required to evade interdictions from other vessels. Before we begin, I just want to show you the status panel. Status. Status. We're only looking at the tab functions for now. Functions. On the left functions. here, under the diagram of the ship, there are some numbers, specifically the ship's jump range for interstellar travel. We need to know the jump range because we're about to select a mission from the Starport Services menu. And if you're just starting out, you'll want to make sure that some of your first missions are within the reach of your ship. Close panel. Closing. First thing we're going to do here is look at the Station Services menu and pick out a mission that will take us to another system. Let's see who's offering missions for a reasonable reward. OK, this will do. The name of the system is here. I'll go ahead and take that mission. Now we can exit the Starport service menu. Next we'll open the navigation panel. Navigation. Navigation. In here we can see a tab called Transactions. 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 There's a list here of what I have been doing in terms of accepting missions. It even has a find in there where I may have crossed some lines somewhere. <laughs> How very hand solo of me. Uh, anyway, mm. what we're looking for here is to confirm that the mission instructions are here, which of course they are. Let's take a look at those. Alright, we're clear on which system and station to visit. So now we can go ahead and lock in a course to that system and prepare for interstellar travel to get there. Navigation. Down here you'll notice that we've got lots of different icons. Some of these are platforms and bases that you can go and land on in this system. There are other icons for planets, other bodies. And down the bottom here, these round ones uh, that look like the sun being orbited by planets in a system, that's what the icon is, uh, these are other stars and you can only travel to these with interstellar travel you have to use your jump drive to get to them. Uh, and that's what we're going to be doing. Now the one that we've got a mission for is this one here. And it's got another icon next to it, indicating that we have a mission there. We'll click on that. And now we're going to lock that in to our navigation system, exit the menu, and then we can get underway. Finished. Power to systems. Powering shields. Launch. Acknowledge, Commander. Running integrity checks. Diagnostics done. Final checks to ascent thrust vector controls complete. Standby for launch. Landing complet is engaged. Clear Departure handover. Standby. I'm engaging thrusters and bringing up the landing modules. Distancing to 30 meters. Boost engines. Boost activated. We're clear of the station's mass lock now. The system we're heading to is locked in. We can now begin the journey through hyperspace. Engage jump drive. Jumping. Hyperspace velocity reached. Awaiting further instructions. Once we're in hyperspace, you should zero the throttle. The command I use for this 
engage exit protocols. Engaging exit protocols. Now that we've arrived, the frameshift drive will begin to cool down. This process takes a little while before it will allow the jump drive to be used again. But that's fine as we'll be heading to a location in this system, so we won't be using it for a while. Although we've safely dropped out of hyperspace, we are still travelling at super cruise speed and not normal space flight. Keep in mind that whenever you drop from hyperspace, it will always be at super cruise velocity. So although it looks like we're stationary, we're actually not. Now we need to double check which stations we need to head to in the system. Transactions. Transactions. Now looking at this, I can see the station name. So we can now lock in a course. Navigation. Navigation. There it is. Let's lock it in. Done. Point your ship away from the star. Main drive, 30%. 30%. It's best to move away slowly until you've gained some distance. Main drive, 75%. 75%. Main drive's maximum. Maximum velocity engaged. Sometimes when you're minding your own business, other ships will follow you and try to pull you out of supercruise using interdiction technology. It's a bit like a tractor beam, and this is what happens when they use it. They lock onto you and then activate the interdiction module. You'll need to fight with your ship's controls to keep the escape vector centered if you want to avoid being pulled out of supercruise and potentially face a dangerous situation. The more blue you see in the gauge on your left, the more chance you have of evading the interdiction. Oh, and if you zero your throttle, it's as good as submitting. Fortunately for me, I've avoided the interdiction, this time. Now that we're back en route to the station, I'll adjust the throttle to 50% which will allow the ship to handle our approach velocity automatically. Main drives 50%. Engaging 50%. Once we get close enough, the safe disengage prompt will appear in front of you. Disengage. Supercruise drive disengaging. Request docking. Requesting landing pad. This is an outpost or platform. The difference here is you're landing in space. Otherwise, it's simple enough. 10%. All stop. Once you've arrived and docked, go into Starport Services. Select the mission board and you'll have a confirmation of success. Then you can claim your award. I'm going to continue picking up other missions now, until next time, over and out.